Hi again. Uh, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the last part of Chapter 4, I'm sorry, Chapter 3, which is uh, preparing the adjusted trial balance. The adjusted trial balance is prepared after all the adjustments have been made. So usually we're using a worksheet, which I'll show you in a second. It starts with the trial balance which is just a list of all the accounts at the end of the accounting cycle. Then we go through all of the adjustments, all the journal entries associated with the adjusting entries. And then we use those to come up with an adjusted trial balance. This is what we use to uh, form the basis of preparing the financial statements. Here we see uh, Smart Touch's adjusted trial balance. The format of this is very standard. We start with assets in the top, and then liabilities, and then uh, various equity accounts. And after the withdrawal account, we have the income statements accounts starting with revenue and then expenses. Here's where most of the adjustments are going to impact. Usually all adjusting entries are going to impact one balance sheet account and one income statement account. When you do them in this order, with the balance sheet accounts on top and the income statement accounts on the bottom, it makes it easy to prepare the financial statements. Note that as per the accounting equation, debits and credits should always equal each other. This table, Exhibit 3.6, um, is very useful for understanding what happens to the financial statements if the adjusting entries aren't made. Uh, for example, with the prepaid expenses, the adjusting entry is a debit to expense and a credit to an asset account. Notice at the bottom it says if it's a capital asset, we're going to use accumulated depreciation. So if you don't do this, what's happened? Well, expenses are understated, meaning net income is too high. Also, assets are going to be too high because you haven't reduced them, thus incurring, incurring the expense. Go through this table and understand the impact of the prepaids, which are up here, and the accruals, which are down here. This is very important to understanding what the nature of adjusting entries actually is. Finally, we come to our worksheet. Um, here is what we got as an output from Chapter 2, the unadjusted trial balance. This is just a listing of all the ending balances in the ledger account at the end of the month. In the middle column, we transfer the debits and credits from the various journal entries. An interesting exercise here is to see if you can identify what all the adjustments are. For example, I see a debit for 225 up here for accounts receivable um, and if I thought about it enough I would know that the corresponding credit was in a revenue account. So this would have been an accrued revenue. Probably a more obvious one is right here. Office supplies 80 and supplies expense 80. This was an adjusting entry to record the usage of supplies. One more would be a debit to rent expense here and a credit to prepaid rent here. We've reduced the prepaid account by prepaid rent account by $800 and thereby recognized the rent expense during the period. Try to see if you can go through the rest of these adjustments and figure out what the adjusting entry came from. What the, not just what the entry was, but what the meaning of it was. 
Once we have all the adjustments, we prepare the adjusted trial balance. Keeping in mind that a debit to a debit balance increases the balance. Here we have a debit balance and a credit, so the balance is reduced. Here we have another debit and a credit, which also reduces the balance. So when you're preparing the adjusted trial balance, be sure to keep in mind whether you're adding or subtracting from the original trial balance. Again, at the bottom, the debits and credits for your adjustments have to be equal, and the debits and credits for your adjusted trial balance have to be equal too. Notice that the debits here are not the sum of the unadjusted trial balance plus the adjustments. Do you know why? This might be a good question to ask yourself or to bring up in one of the discussion forums. In other words, why is this 64,380 not simply the sum of the 62,230 plus the 3160? In terms of our um, examination, we're not going to really look at this objective in Chapter 7 to a great degree. Um, basically, one way to do this, rather than in this case um, debiting prepaid rent, here's an example where they prepaid $3,000 of rent in advance. So what they do is they go in and debit rent expense for the 3000 But then, at the end of the year, um, they take out of the rent expense the amount that would have been in the prepaid expense account. So I'm not going to ask you about this. This is a little less common. And as long as you understand the adjusting entries that we've already talked about, it shouldn't be a problem.